Okay, let's just uh, look at a breast augmentation and kind of the reasons for doing a breast augmentation for this patient. Um, you can see in the before photo that she has really nice breasts. And she asked me for something that fit with her body, but I said, your breasts already fit with your body. In fact, she probably has more volume than most women do for how thin and narrow she is. She's only, you know, I think 104 pounds. So she already has really good volume. Um, so she's, she wants her breasts bigger. Obviously we're doing a breast augmentation for that reason, but there's a couple other things that she really wants. And that is, it, it's hard to tell when she's laying down. You can see in the before photo where she has a nice shape to her breast and, and she has more volume in the lower part and less volume in the upper part. It's hard to tell when patients lay down because obviously the, the breast tissue and the fat get distributed a little bit more evenly and a little bit more towards the outside because of gravity. But what she really wants is she wants some fullness in the upper part of her breast and she wants more cleavage. And you know, cleavage, she, she has nice spacing of her breasts already here. This is the top part of her cleavage. And then it comes nicely into the middle where she just has a finger width apart, which is basically perfect cleavage. We don't really want them too, too close, but we, we like them to be close. So a finger width is kind of just the perfect amount. And so the implant is gonna fill in this upper pole and the implant's also gonna fill in this cleavage. And those are really the two things that she lacks that we're going to be able to accomplish with putting the implant in. I always think of the implant as a uh, tool for us to use. So it's, it's like a solution for some problems. So you have to keep in mind, she doesn't really have any problems. She has nice breasts and everything looks good, but she wants to have more volume, more fullness, and more cleavage. And so we kind of identify those problems and then we use the implant as our solution. And so that's really the goal today. I'm gonna to be putting the implant underneath her gland because she has a lot of breast tissue and she's gonna be able to have really good coverage of the implant just with her own breast tissue. For women that don't have very much breast tissue, we have to go underneath the muscle um, because you would really see the implant if we didn't. But in this case, we can go underneath the gland. It's a much easier recovery. Um, it's really where the implant's supposed to be because it's gonna be going under her breast. Under the muscle's a little bit more unnatural position. When we put it underneath the muscle, we actually have to cut the muscle so that the implant does slide down underneath the breast. So this is a really, really nice way of doing it. I actually don't go exactly under the gland. I leave a little bit of fascia that lays on the chest wall and I leave that up with the, the breast. So that's kind of like a, a happy medium between going under the muscle and going under the breast. So that's the plan for today and we'll show you uh, as we, as we uh, get a little bit further along. Okay, so we're finished here and this looks really, really pretty. And that's really the most important thing with any type of breast augmentation. It's not just singly determined by volume, it has to look pretty. And for her, she already had a beautiful shape, so an implant's gonna look great in her, which it does. I use a 345cc high profile silicone gel implant. I use all Allergan implants. And frequently I use a high profile because I like the look of that fullness. A high profile implant, the difference between a high profile and a low profile is the high profile has more projection and it's more narrow. Whereas a lower profile implant has less projection and is wider. So the really the low profile implants can look pretty natural if you will. Um, it's not a look that I particularly like and so I tend to use a high profile full breast um, to get a full breast and there's lots and lots of people that don't like that look and they like a low profile and there certainly are surgeons that use that and so that's why I'm always telling patients what do you like look at your eye if you're looking at photos and you like something that has more projection it's a little bit narrower then you know that you're gonna be more of a high-profile uh, type person so 
But the point of this operation, remember, was to increase this fullness up top. Remember, she had this little shaded area here where she's empty. Now she's going to have volume here. And also to show off her cleavage. Remember, she has this really nice spacing. This is always a little bit lifted at the very beginning uh, as we do this, and then it tends to settle. But she's going to have really pretty full cleavage in here. So she already had a nice shape, so we just kind of took advantage of that nice shape, corrected these two issues that she wanted done, and we're finished, and she has really pretty breasts. And they're of a nice size. Remember, she's pretty petite, so 345, it looks pretty big uh, in her, and it's, I think it's appropriate size. She has enough looseness. We could have gone, uh, say, to like 450, 485 even probably. I could have fit in here, but then her breasts would just be distorted and they would just be too big and they wouldn't look as pretty as they do now. Thank you.